This video is brought to you by Midway USA. Support the channel by choosing Midway for your shooting and outdoor supplies. Ready? Yes, 150. Impact. Impact. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Da, 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 yeah, da, 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 da. 200. Impact. Impact. Right in that center cluster. All right. Okay, sir. We are on at 250. Go just left, quarter target. Impact. All right, so we're compensating a little bit for that wind, eh? Yep. Go left quarter. Nice. Both both good hits. All right. So what we've what we've uh, learned about these AK systems, especially when you're using a bolt on a chassis like this one, a chassis, these are chassis, right? Yeah. Um, you can't push on them nearly as hard. Like my sure shot, I could crank on the sure shot, the Russian sure shot that I have on the AK-9er, I could crank on that thing. But on this, I have to be a little bit more cognizant that it is a bolt on item. Is it, um, does it use the handguard retainer pin or a handguard retainer? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm on at 350. Okay, 350. I'm gonna use a second dot. Impact. You can ease off it just to touch on the windage. Perfect elevation, send another. Impact. Okay. But I mean, obviously the wind is definitely left to right. Could I mean, I'm feeling be... it feels nice right now because yeah. this is in fact not Gorka temperature. Yes. It's like, this is, I don't know when we're going to publish this, the but... The things Henry does for you, people. This is, this is not normal Gorka temperature. These things were made for cooler weathers. <laughs> 400. All right, 400. Okay, come up a quarter target and push to left edge. Nice center punch. Nice, okay. That first one was an impact, lower right corner. Got it. We corrected it and that was a six second shot. So it's uh, quite a bit more wind than... Uh, it's, it's coming and going. It's earlier, a blustery, yeah. inconsistent looking type of day, you know? Yep. Okay, sir, we are on at 450. Okay, I'm gonna drop it to the third dot. Of course, this is the EXPS 3-4, a very unpopular EOTech, but for AKs, I actually, uh, with a magnifier, is actually not terrible. Impact, go left quarter. Nice. Sick. So yeah, I use the third dot coming down. So actually that hold is pretty similar to like uh, an ACSS's hold as you go down the tree. Makes sense. Those were upper chest impacts, okay? Sick, okay. The crouching target, yeah? Correct, yes. Okay, 500, I'm there. Impact. Dead on, send another. Dude! You just cleared it clean with an AK! What? <laughs> what? Spitznaz, my friends. Spitznaz. What? But since we cleared the target, Josh, uh, since we cleared the course with a with a clean run, you know, that normally means one thing. Oh my god. 
But look, look. But Henry. Henry. It's like water and oil. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can't believe he just cleared that. With an AK. Clean with a short barreled AK with the red dot and magnifier. <laughs> Alright. Oh my gosh. Alright, so. So the bonus round uh, is we will take the farthest target and drop five rounds on it as quickly as you can. Um, as proficiently as you can. <laughs> okay. I am ready for this. Okay. Impact! Right edge! Off the left! Off the left! Oh, impact! Impact! Off the right! Just short. Uh, okay, that's five rounds. Man, tough. That one I mean, that was off the, I thought it was going to be off the left edge. It was it just skimmed the left edge of the plate. So that is... I just death jammed that thing myself as, as I'm singing the praises of the superior Russian technology. Uh, first of all, I am supposed to act like I expected it to clear that course with no misses. Although, in the base rifle format, this thing was actually really good with iron sights to begin with. Yes. All right, so AK-105, basically stock internals. Nothing has changed from the Ishmash factory. We've got a TDI X47 uh, chassis system on it, which was all the rage back in like, what, 2011, maybe 2012? It was one of the main there. like option, optional alternatives to like the Zeneco stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like this was the heat back in the day. I mean, it still looks super cool. People always think it's a Zeneco. But this just sailed it all the way out to 500 without a miss. Of course, we did the bonus round and it was a little bit more difficult because unlike the AR system's inline recoil, especially if you're running an LPVO, you may be shocked to realize, to learn that this is in fact not an ideal precision rifle setup. <laughs> that said, um, I don't know, Josh. I'm just a little bit at all. I, I mean, I don't think that we would have expected this to clear. I think we would have expected this to do what most of the other AKs that we've shot recently have done, which is do very well mm -hmm. with a handful of misses. Now, part of that, like the EOTech should be a part of this conversation. Sure. The EXPS 3-4 is, is an EOTech that is not very popular at all with people. Like people typically shy away from this. And quite frankly, like I, I bought it because I was, you know, one, it was cheaper. It was not a lot cheaper, but just like a little bit. But I was kind of curious if those four dots with a magnifier would make a difference for a short barrel rifled AK that had a lot more drop. And it actually corresponded exceptionally well to the AK-105's drop. Um, that said, if you do pop the magnifier off, oh, if you do pop the magnifier off, it gets a little more difficult to use. Still usable. Really busy though, right? I mean, yeah, still usable if you dial it, if you dial the, 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 uh, the reticle intensity down, um, but not amazing. Uh, still, I don't think we could detract much from this. I mean... No, that was, that was really, really good. I was, I, I cannot believe that you were able to clear that like that. Remember, these are also not 77 grain OTMs. Correct. These are... Wolf lacquered mill spec 60 grain ball ammunition. And it just goes to show again that like so much of this stuff as as we continue to shoot these these different firearms, it goes to show you how important it is that you're just practicing. Yeah. Right? Like we we again we do this thing where we shoot a bunch of different guns. If we came out and shot the same guns over and over and over and over again. I mean, you, you can understand how the skill threshold would increase. Yeah. And it's just, it goes to show that the, all of the talk, all of the talk from the early 2000s, mid 2000s about how AKs just are not accurate. They cannot engage past two or 300 yards. I mean, it's just baloney. It just showed up a bunch of ARs on that yeah. we have on the, on the leaderboard right now. Yeah. Again, I think, I think it, there's a ton of reasons associated with our experience improving and increasing, but my goodness, like, it's not that much. <laughs> like, there are caveats to it though. Like you'll see, if you watch it, you'll see that it seemed to be 
the recoil seemed to affect me a little bit more. It's not because it recoils a lot more. It's because typically with an AR, if I'm shooting prone, I try, I try to pin it down a little more. But with the chassis system, if I did pin it, because it's connected to the barrel, uh, the, uh, the barrel, uh, the handguard retainer on the barrel up front, that would have jammed the barrel down and it would have affected my hold itself. So there are caveats to running this. Like if you're running this up close, obviously you could pin it to yourself and just jam it because AKs, especially 545s, are very forgiving on the recoil control. Um, but these things, if it does contact with your barrel, is just not like uh, an, an M4 yeah, URGI well, with a free float system. Right, exactly. Uh, now, Henry, how many rounds do you have left? Uh, I, I know what Josh wants to do. He wants to push it farther. He just checked to see if there was any, uh, you know, to how the battery life was. So that means we're probably going to push this out farther. Is that what you're suggesting, Josh? You know, you can't run a clean course and then not go further, right? All right, let's go. Let's go. I, I mean, do you you have another aiming dot, right? I do have another aiming dot. Yeah. Dude, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Of course, in typical Henry fashion, I don't do this to loner guns, but. Some of my stuff I run fairly hard and it's already scratched up the EOTech quite a bit. <laughs> All right, so that was 500, right? And we were on dot three at the head. Correct. So we need to be probably what? Dot four well over the top? Uh, let me use a fourth dot just like put it on, what, what are we looking at, 650? 650. All right, uh, the wind's kind of died down a little bit. There's some down range. No, quite a bit down range. Quite a bit. I'm gonna hold range. left edge. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would push off the left, honestly. Nine o'clock. Okay. Off the left, and okay. then you're putting the fourth dot at the twelve o'clock position. Correct. I'm there for it. Come up half a target. Windage is good. Okay, sorry, not half a target. Come up one full plus target. Okay, come left half a target. That's the elevation. Dude! Did it hit? Oh, yeah! wow. I heard it hit. Wow, yeah. Nice. Very nice. Uh, that low, the fourth dot was put on, you see where the shade is? Yes. On the, the base of the hill behind? Yes. The fourth dot was in line with that shade. Dude. 12 and a half inch, 545 AK with an EOTech out yeah. to 625. Let's go. Yeah, look, look, if, if, I could, if I could say any last piece to this before we jump into the debrief, guys who are actually serving out there, whether you're, you know, which, whichever branch you're in, do not, do not underestimate things like this because constantly when I was in service, AKs were just underestimated and said that you can't hit anything past 200. That Ridiculous. just happened. So, I mean, there's a lot for us to talk about at this point. Yeah, dude, let's head to the debrief. See you guys there. Privyet, Tavorish. You must have caught me admiring my flowers. I was only about to fertilize them. The best way I know. The Russian way. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Because shows like this, they're brought to you of course by Slate Black Industries. But most importantly, they're brought to you by the patrons of Patreon and Utreon. That's right. This group of comrades, they support us, financially, intellectually, but most importantly, emotionally. So today I'd like to invite you, come, join us, become one of us. Together, we are going to start the revolution in small arms development. But if you cannot, we understand. We will be just as happy to see your comments in the comment section below. But for now, I have to finish fertilizing and we will get on with the show. 
and boom, a perfect run, Henry, with the Kalashnikov. First time we've had an ace run with the Kalashnikov platform. And of all of the ones that we have shot, you did it with a short-barreled setup. Freaking awesome. And frankly, like this is just a vindication of the AK-12 platform. You know, it is everything we want it to be, except that this isn't the AK-12. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I'm I'm glad to see the 105 do so well. And quite frankly, so this is something that, uh, for people to think about. Um, I, I'd imagine uh, the AR-15 guys, if, if our show is any indication on which one is better, the two rifles that currently have perfect scores on the show are both long stroke, gas piston systems with a two lug rotating bolt one you stop that specifically stop it is the ak system like a peak ak system one of the last series that mikhail kalashnikov got to develop and the other one might i say is an enhanced ak system that the uh, schweizer were able to distill into something better so Josh, don't if, don't listen to don't listen to a word that this propagandist is spewing. All right. Well, you know, um, I could ask some experts. Me, I've got a friend in San Antonio who's running for Congress who would potentially uh, talk to you about the differences between the AK and and the M16. I'm sure I'm happy to bring him on board to talk about why the AK-105 is obviously the superior option. This is a giant line to euthanize kittens. Sorry, th did this come out of that shop? This actually did come out of Brandon Herrera's shop. So, uh... <laughs> well, look at that. Zach, uh, over at Brandon Herrera, their lead gunsmith, actually helped me uh, fit the 105 parts kits to this Saiga 545. This is the same one that we shot before with iron sights. And you remember, like, with iron sights, it actually shot exceedingly well. Like... It was also in like doggy, wild crap winds, crap right? Weather, right? Yeah, absolutely insane winds. And of course, like we improve it with a, an extremely heavy chassis system, like one of the first chassis systems of its kind, I think, like from the like 2010s era. And then with an extremely heavy like peck unit up front. Well, excuse me, pursed unit up front. <laughs> <laughs> with an extremely heavy of course metallic vert grip from zenit and an eotech and we'll i think this we need to talk about this sighting system in a bit as well but this whole sure. this whole loadout right here i mean this is a very like 2010s to 2015 spetsnaz loadout like this is this is before space a ak's were a thing like, this would have been the pre-Space AK, Space AK. So this isn't even, like, the latest gen. Like, the AK-9 are running, like, a SureShot armament chassis with, like, mm -hmm. M-Locks sleeked out in the front. It's, like, super lightweight. Um, that system is actually, in my opinion, the, the Niner is more shootable than this because just because of the front, how heavy this thing is. Uh, but, and yet, you remember the AK-9, the perfect score was thwarted. I mean, well, to that end, though, we were on our way mm -hmm. to, to acing it with the Niner as well, right? It was a suppressor coming loose, user error, right? We, we yep. weren't, the suppressor came loose on it, and we started throwing rounds all over the place. Yep. And, um, but yeah. you are well on, you, you are at 500 with a perfect score, right? Absolutely. On the final target. Yeah, so, I mean, so both of these goes things. goes to show, these, these things are absolute absolutely uh deadly when they are kitted out mm -hmm. and so like i mean you want to kind of like i know we've talked about ak's like ad nauseum for some people i mean for me the 100 series this is this is peak this is peak ak in my opinion um just because like i've talked in the past how i really liked what the yugos were doing with the ak and trying to enhance it it's interesting what the chinese did but at the end of the day, when you're talking about an AK with the um, the maximum flexibility between a bone stock AK versus having the aftermarket kit to kit it out, 
the AK100 series really embodies a lot of that flexibility that uh, can capture both past and present kit. And I think between this, and we also shot it with iron sights, we shot it next to the AK-74 uh, N, which is the predecessor to the AK-100 series. Um, that's kind of the cornerstone of the modern AK. And we also shot your Bulgarian SLR-104 FR, which is a Bulgarian copy of the AKS-74, also a highly lethal AK in a similar yeah. in a similar loadout, might I add, but with right. Zenico instead of the uh, um, X forty seven chassis. Yeah, from TDI. Yeah. yeah, and well, and let's talk really quick, Henry. Just talk about the chassis, just really yeah. fast. Okay. Like, let's tell that story, and for for those who haven't heard it, so you know, this was this was a chassis that I originally sourced for my Alpha Trainer build, which I'm sure Henry can put a link somewhere mm -hmm. uh and i saw it on a kalashnikov concern photo from like what is it the, like the early 2000s right somewhere yeah. in like the 2010 range it, 2010s and yeah. it was this freaking sick ak-102 setup mm -hmm. um and so i saw that rail system and knew it wasn't zenico and so went on the hunt and there was a period of time where these were commercially available mm -hmm. but then they went away and like they weren't, they were no longer being uh, made available in the U S. So I had to go yeah. to, I think it was, I think it got it out of a distributor in Israel because had it. they're Israeli rails actually. Yeah. 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 So, and so we brought it, we brought it in for that project. And then ultimately I, uh, I did what every good like cloner boy should do at some point and just modernized my gun and made it more effective. Yeah. Shots fired. I mean, cloning is interesting because, because, Cloning should not be a gospel, but but it's interesting learning about the development of kit. And and right here, you're seeing the development of the chassis system between this and what the Niner ended up at. The key on building up a good modernized AK, though, is to have a good base AK, though. I think that has got to be it. So this one being an Ishmash built, I mean, it was an Ishmash Saiga 545 to begin with that we used all the original guts and then just, you know, essentially reworked it with the proper um, kit to turn it back into the AK-100 series. Initially, I was thinking, should I go 74 or 105? I'm really glad I went 105. I was really hesitant because I had to do the NFA paperwork for it. And it's a valuable AK, you know, Saiga 545. But the base rifle ended up being like actually a really 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 good rifle and so um once i actually feel like i don't know if it's for certain i feel like uh, with a shorter barrel i feel like i've actually mm -hmm. got a little better accuracy i don't know if that makes mm. sense or not i i don't know about from an accuracy perspective right um but i can tell you from a handling perspective and a gassing perspective oh yeah, it definitely handles super nice. Yeah, uh, with the shorter barrel, um, even just compared to you know my seventy four, it's or or one hundred four the the Bulgarian. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it is just it's just a little bit less snappy mm -hmm. in terms of the recoil impulse, and it's just a little bit more pointable because obviously when you do kit out an AK like this with like the full chassis system they get really stinking heavy. And so just losing just a little bit of the weight way out on front and bringing that barrel in just a little bit, it made a lot of difference in terms of the balance of the setup and being able to transition it, how you can maneuver with it. Uh, and again, the recoil impulse was actually, I thought, just a little, it wasn't, it's not dramatic, it's not world changing, but it's just a little bit less snappy than the longer barrel setups. But Compared to a crank. Well, I, I would put the crank into like an entirely different right. category than this, right? It, right? Like but, but this is, it, this is to me, this is a general purpose rifle setup of some sort. But what I'm, the crank is really more what I'm trying PDW, to get to yeah? is like on the practical accuracy course, you can see that 13.1 inch barrel is able to sustain the stability and the velocity to actually get out to range. And so when you drop yeah. this into a roll that 
like a, an FSB Spetsnaz officer, that turns in, it into an ideal candidate to modernize. That turns it into an ideal base system to use suppressed, unsuppressed as a general purpose item, kitting it out or running it slick. Uh, all of those things add to the attribute of this being one of the peak AK series to actually push out there and actually use in a real world scenario. Now, one thing though, Josh, you were talking about that one image of the uh, of Kalashnikov Concerns Expo. Yeah. I, I believe it's a 2012 Expo. Um, I, or like 12 or 14 or 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, in, it was not in America. I think that was in Jordan, I think. But did you know who kicked that thing out? I do, but I didn't at the time, but you've now told me. Our friend Vlad, um, Vladimir Onokoy, uh, he's been on the show, you know, good good dude. Uh, he was the one who actually kitted it out. Like, I think it was like the week before, the day before the expo, and he just like spray painted that thing like, you know, you would as a soft unit. And that one What a image, small world, yeah, dude, I know, right? I know. What a small world. So that one picture, it's like, it's a, I think it's, I think we saw it because it was an AK-102 that he put it onto. So the 5.56 version of this. Um, yeah. And he ran it with um, cl a collapsible stock, the CAA stock that the Russians typically, yeah. you'll see them running like an M4 looking stock. A lot of times those like from that era were the CAA stocks. Again, once again, an Israeli company. Mm -hmm. um, but the entire system was painted. And the reason we saw it was because we were doing heavy research on the AK-102 for the AK-9er. And that's how the image surfaced. And Josh, like, that has been, like, singed into Josh's mind. Like, oh, that's so cool. But then I think the downside to the pick rail chassis systems of that era, the weight. It's just the weight. Like, the weight sucks when it comes to running those chassis systems. Um, yeah. But that said... Let's talk about the run, though. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't absolutely. know what to say about the run. Like it was a perfect score, zero misses. Well, I w think about I the rifles. Understand. Think about the Western rifles. Where do you think it came from? Like where? How did that? How did you do it? Whereas you know we've shot hundreds of other guns at this point, and only a small fraction have had been perfect. And we're talking like amazing, really accurate guns, even even some phenomenal stuff at 450, 500. You, if you get the wind call wrong with a 556 five, gun, it's you're going to miss. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so how how were you able to lock this one down? I mean, nice. so, again, we were shooting ball ammunition, too. So that wasn't like this wasn't like shooting 77 grains. Right. I think. Even more impressive. I think, however, we have to acknowledge, and I, I hate to throw it this way because, um, one, I've gotten better than, than when I first started shooting this course. Uh, second of all, you've gotten better at spotting and helping me out with wind as we press down range. But even with all of that, the rifle itself had a core accuracy. And when I was shooting it, the one thing, you, you know, like we've worked on this on the range before, before we we came out here and the one thing i i recognized was like when i was cranking on the vert grip it was actually putting pressure on the barrel and that would throw the rounds off and so this time i was very very conscious to not crank on the vert grip whenever i'm firing because normally like you and i we have a tendency if there's a vert grip right here we want to pin it yeah because yeah. of the way we learn to deal with recoil but when it comes to shooting long distance, sometimes you may not want to do that. So I learned not to do that with the AK systems. If it's running, like right here, you can see the chassis is attached to the handguard retainer and directly pinned onto the, uh, the, the barrel itself. And so when it comes to that, I was very conscious of not pressing onto the handguard very, very hard. Um, obviously with free float systems. And I would say like the sure shot system is like a semi free float system that matters less. And especially like when it comes to the ARs, that doesn't even matter. 
uh, you could like pin it as hard as you want and you wouldn't really see any discernible difference. Like if you pin it hard enough, I'm sure you could. <laughs> like I learned not to speak in absolutes because I'm, you know, I don't know what people will yeah, do. Yeah, there could that. be some combination of scenarios where a free floated <clears throat> system on the AR platform still experiences some sort of shift if you're right. like really jacking on it or, or you have an ultra long rail with a bipod on the end that you're really loaded up on. Or I'm sure there is a time or place where it's possible. Right. And so like when you're shooting rifles like this, like if you could help it, like I try to hold it a little farther back to have less effect on the barrel. If you can't hold it farther back, just don't crank on the stuff in the front. And so that sort of preserves the accuracy a little more. And then the second part is actually, I bought the EOTech as an experimentation on this one because this is an EXPS 3-4. This is the version with the four dots instead of two dots or a single dot in the center. And when I bought it, I, I remember I was talking to you and you're like, ah, I wouldn't do that, man. <laughs> yeah. But it, well, it was like, yeah. it was a hundred bucks. Uh, yeah. It was a hundred bucks cheaper. And I was like, I mean, what's, what's the worst I could do? I could sell it back on. on and I was like, Henry, there's a reason it's a hundred bucks cheaper. There's a reason. I know. I know. But I, I wanted to see, <laughs> I wanted a document, you know, like, is it, is this a validly terrible system? I mean, it's hilarious that I would do that. Like with the strange options that i end up bringing through the channel uh these are these are the things that that i would bring through you know and i was looking at it, i was like i know it's going to be really fuzzy because i look at your exps 3-2 and you could yeah. see the two dots are kind of fuzzy like i could still make it out i think your eyes are worse like they, they like blend together for you definitely yeah but with this one if you're not using the magnifier it looks like a solid bar and so yeah. i was thinking back like that actually kind of looks like some of these Russian reticles that you see on, yeah. you know, Russian issued optics. Yeah. And I was like, ah, you know, that, that may look kind of cool. Like it may look like, you know, like a hybrid between Western and, and Eastern stuff. And actually, yeah, that's true. Like if you don't use a magnifier, it looks like a solid bar. So I have it set to where, um, like on the tip of the bar, it's like a, a hundred, hundred yard zero. So that's, fairly good if you hold chest and push it out to 300 so you just use it like a solid bar pushing out hold chest but then if you drop a magnifier on it those four dots actually correspond really well to like the one two three and four it's really weird how that how that played out and because of that kind of like why the acss system why we like it so much is because we're able to correspond the distance with the uh, the drop-offs on the acss in essence, when I when I correlated the 105's uh, bullet drop with the EXPS 3-4, again, this was not planned. I'm not a genius. This is like I'm, this is dumb luck on my part on buying cheap stuff. It corresponded very well. So then I only had one more factor I had to deal with, which was wind. As long as we conquered wind, and we had just a little sprinkle, a pinch of Lady Lux pixie dust mm. on it yeah there you go you had a perfect score i mean okay so if we shot so it again you, I, could you i don't know yeah. if it would be perfect like i just that's I don't exactly know what i was about to ask perfect. you if you if you shot this again would you be able to routinely put up this uh, I, I think the answer i think we know that the of answer course, is probably of course, my friend. no 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 we can we can it will do perfect every time the western rifles that this has defeated HK416, the dirty American M4s. Aha, aha. Has it defeated the M4 though? Uh, all of the all of the rifles that we've had on the on the current list, as of the time of recording, as of the time we publish this, this is the highest scoring optic equipped service rifle. So the only rifle that's tied with it is the Swiss SG550 with iron sights. Everything else has scored less, worse than, technically worse than this. Now, of course, we're not shooting this in a vacuum. Environmentals change. Um, my shooting condition is different between day to day. I mean, there are, this is not a purely scientific test, um, but it's a good taste test on how these things do. Obviously, though, if the AK can't group, if the AK is inaccurate, so inaccurate that it cannot hit 
like a, an ESAPI size target, which these targets are ESAPI size pushing all the way out, it would not have scored like this. You don't have luck. You don't get that good of luck pressing out. Yeah. Now, right. would I be able to score full score every single time? I don't think I could. Um, yeah. Could I do this? Like maybe like one every like three or four times. Perfect score pushing mm -hmm. out. Yeah, I, I've got a greater confidence that I could do that. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. However, yeah. like we looked at on the bonus round, though, even though the 105 has, has relatively low recoil for an AK, the way I have to, like, crane my neck really high and lose my whole cheek weld in order to, uh, in order to shoot this rifle, I actually I do get a lot more of, like, this movement than the AR-15 because at, at the end of the day right. like your recoil is still offset whereas the a ARs you've got inline recoil you've got a good cheek weld as you're pressing into the target and so we established the bonus system initially as you know just to break uh, break ties when it comes to these things but I think we're seeing a little more outside of just breaking the ties like how a rifle recoils and interacts with a shooter also matters a lot. And of course, when you can't crank on the vert grip, I have no recoil control. It is just like Yeah, you can't you can't apply like a ton of pressure to the front right. end of the gun. And right? at that point it's just free banking like that. Yeah. And so when I'm Well it is it is it is an interesting you know, it is interesting, especially as we've been dabbling more and more with like the scoped carbine type of stuff. And at least I have. I've been listening to those that those um, instructions and instructional vids and podcasts and stuff a bit more. Um, and some of, you know, you hear the, the terminology for like pre-shot wobble zone or like where your reticle is going pre-shot and then you have it post-shot. And in this, you can have a position where your pre-shot is actually like pretty good, mm -hmm. but because you're having to be very ginger with how you or like hold it gingerly so you're not disturbing the barrel with the, the fact that it's not free-floated, you lose some of the post shot you know, control now and yeah. now one thing though that i think moving forward because we haven't done the bonus rounds a lot so i haven't been like just drilling 500 yard targets with rifles this whole entire time so i don't have a lot of experience doing that because that's not that's not a regular thing that you would do like yes in a firefight yes but typically if you're doing that you're talking about like one maybe 200 meter distance with a with a carbine a 500 mm -hmm. like you wouldn't be just dumping rounds into it i think if i were to do this again um if i had the opportunity to do this again and again like these are the first times we're doing these bonus rounds i would just let it finish recoiling get back on target and collect the hit rather than trying to push myself too fast because i was pushing myself too fast as far as a bonus round mm -hmm. we could tell that the yeah. rifle can shoot that accuracy to land on the target that came down to the recoil, the lack of recoil um, management techniques. And in this case, it was forced to not apply any of those techniques. And the second thing is like my inexperience in doing that particular exercise. Like if I did this 10 times, mm -hmm. I would have done it better. And by doing it better, I don't think the recoil would have gotten better. I just think I would have taken my time to make sure that I got those rounds on target. Yeah, you let the sights settle. You let the sights settle. Yeah. You take a more accurate second shot as opposed to laying the clock sort of like, or the idea of doing it fast, <clears throat> you know, take get you to take faster follow-up shots than your sights were ready for, yeah. basically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I will add, as we okay, as we get to the end of this segment, like, we also tagged 650 with this after only like a couple shots to figure out where the elevation was. Yeah. Right? So think about that. You're shooting a, a, a AK in a short barrel configuration out to 650. And again, we were able to walk onto that target like relatively easily. Yeah. Um, there's definitely, I mean... <laughs> Uh, that was that was exciting, and I'm again is sort of blown away by it. I thought this run was crazy. Yeah. You know, I thought it was. I you expect, you know, sort of like scoped AR carbines to be able to do this type of stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like Mark Twelve setups, the LSA setup. You know, you're, you're just general scoped carbines. You expect them to be able to clear, especially if you're shooting seventy sevens and things like that. They they can go out to those distances, even the block twos, right? We we can collect hits out to those distances without 
without even having misses, right? Even though we haven't done that on the course, most of that comes down to shooter error or spotter error or a combination thereof. Though, but your expectation is that those rifles can do it. Correct. I don't think my expectation was that this this rifle and a short barrel configuration with a dot and magnifier was going to clear clean. Like, that wouldn't have been my expectation. Well, yeah. I mean, Nor would I have thought you could have hit like <clears throat> 650 after just a couple shots. Like I would have thought it would have been like, we, we put like half a mag down and you got one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, look, I know we're going to hear people like AK fans out there, especially those, you know, like east of the Iron Curtain who are going to be like, oh, yes, of course. I knew it was going to pa-. Nah, Come on, man. Like I've worked with enough guys uh, over at Kalashnikov Concern to know that that's not an accepted thing. Like they, they don't expect their rifles to do that the ak does not optimize on that type of accuracy but does it have the potential of doing that it in my opinion well and a well-made one and, and henry that this is the key and this is what i want to ask you as a final thought as we wrap up is everybody's ak-105 going to shoot like this is does everyone's ak-105 come from the same place during the same time i think one one big one big crutch or not crutch, one one big misnomer that the ak community may have towards these things is that they were made in the same factory in the same qc in the same spec all the time ak-105 nowadays has almost turned into a general blueprint for people to make like a 13.1 inch barreled mid-length rifle barrel system uh, 545 or AK-102. I don't think everyone's AK-105 could do this because simply they were not all made in the same place at the same time. And unlike the Swiss, the batches of AKs that come out of these places... Yeah, vary. by the same person, with the same tolerances, at the same level, so on and so yeah. forth. I mean, that's the key. Yeah. Now, look, I know we're at end of time here. So, ladies and gents... We appreciate you guys tuning in for the ace run with the Kalashnikov. Uh, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, check out 9H Podcasts. And if you are so inclined, join us over on Patreon and hop into the private Discord server. No. Until next time, we'll see you on the range. However, Josh, I know you, you closed it out. But the elephant in the room right now is this is the Russian Spets pattern. What about the Western mm. American capitalist pig? How would the Americans Ergy. respond to the M4? Huh. I mean, I think that's going to be the next the next question is how how is the M4, how are the Americans going to respond from SOCOM? We'll find out. See you guys. Red Con 1, green to green, top copy over. Red Con 96, this is.